morning all now today I'm going to be reviewing this it is a 5 cell 18650 mobile power bank and on the back it has the model number QD 185SX now QD stands for Kidian um, which this is sometimes called it also has a logo on there which says T's or something like that so what it's actually called your guess is as good as mine so let's have a look at the five cells and that just simply means sliding off the back cover now when I say simply it isn't that simple and the first time I attempted this it actually took about half an hour um, and in the end the only way I could do it was to shove a screwdriver into these gaps and then the thing comes off but it's extremely tight and uh, these arrows as you can see don't line up with the tabs very well so it's very difficult to get this thing off but once you do get it off it looks fantastic now this is a very compact mobile power bank I'll stick it side by side with the six cell and you'll see what I mean so there's the six cell mobile power bank it has a very large PCB wasted space running down here there's a bit of wasted space running between these two cells which is where the pillars of the uh, case go on. But the five cell mobile power bank is extremely compact. They've done a very nice job of getting the electronics down to a very small board. These uh, batteries fit in tightly to the edges and tightly to the top and bottom. Very compact. Now, I think that this mobile power bank is as much a battery charger as it is a power bank. And there are several reasons I think that. Firstly, you've got this uh, slide off removable cover, so access to the battery compartment is that much quicker than the units like the 4-cell which have these screw holes holding it together. Secondly, you've got this external activate button. This is the button that you press to get the battery protection IC to turn back on when you first install batteries. Now in the 4-cell power bank, it was a little button shoved down the side of the display quite hard to get to you only need to press it when you replace batteries and this power bank I think the idea is that you put batteries in and then they, they just stay in there so you don't it would only press this once but on the five cell power bank it's external and I think that's because you might want to be changing these quite frequently you put the batteries in you press activate and you're done now the other reason I think this makes a good battery charger is what comes up on the display so I'm going to start by just plugging in uh, the charger lead into the input socket there and have a look at what comes up on the display. So we get the percentage charge level with the least significant digit flashing. Now we've seen that before, it's a bit crazy, but there it is. But if I press the button, we get 4.2 volts and one amp. Now 4.2 volts is actually the voltage of the cells. So they are at the end of their constant current charge phase they've hit their maximum voltage and it's now in its constant voltage charge phase so during that constant let's drop back to 4.1 now but during that constant voltage charge phase that current one amp will gradually drop down probably to about 100 or 150 milliamps and then you know that the charging is done so you get a lot of information which shows you how the batteries are charging and that's why i think this makes a very good battery charger now, of course, the cells are just simply charging in parallel. You're not getting individual uh, control over each cell. There's just a metal strip running down the negative side and a metal strip running down the positive side. Nevertheless, I think this makes a reasonably good battery charger. So let's quickly go through the operation. We switch it on. It flashes on three times. It shows the percentage charge level. It shows the cell voltage, not the output voltage and it shows the current, of course we're not drawing any, and then it drops back to a single dot. Now they've obviously decided that having information on the display all the time uh, is not ideal, so they just light up this single dot. When it's not flashing, it means you're not drawing any current, and of course if you're not drawing any current, then eventually it will time out and the dot will go out. I'm just rambling now, there it is, it's happened. Okay, let's switch it back on. Seventy-seven percent, four point one volts, and zero amps. Notice the uh, little symbols on the right-hand side actually light up on this one. Now, if I press the button, it simply goes through those 
three parameters again. Now if I press and hold the button, we get an option to turn it off, which is great. Let's turn it back on. And if I press and hold the button a bit longer, oh, you can't do it until it's gone through that uh, sequence of information. Press and hold the button a bit longer. We go through off to not. If I let go on not, it means that the auto power off function is not enabled. I simply go through the sequence again Press and hold the button, go through off, and it says AUT, which is auto. So now the auto power off is enabled. Now there's also an emergency flashlight. Press the button twice, and the flashlight comes on, and it's quite bright. It's uh, probably about half a watt, quarter watt maybe. Uh, press the button twice again, and the light goes off. What's odd though, is if it's showing current, or voltage, pressing the button twice does nothing. So it's a little bit uh, badly behaved as an emergency flashlight because it doesn't always come on in an emergency. You have to press it at the right time. So I've now plugged my Nexus 7 into the 2 amp output and you can see that the little dot on the display is flashing and that means that the unit has detected that current is being drawn um, the Nexus 7 says 37% charging AC and that light will just continue to flash and of course because current is being drawn the unit won't power off. How much current is being drawn? Let's have a look. 77% battery, 4 volts on the cells and we're drawing 0.4 amps. Now that 0.4 amps I'm guessing is the current being drawn at the cells so that's going to be different from the current being drawn on the outside. Let's check that with the charger doctor. So we've got 0.35 on the charger doctor, 0.5 on the power bank. Let's do that again. 4 volts, 0.4 on the power bank, 0.3 something on the charger doctor. So my guess is that the current shown on the power bank is the cell current. The current shown out here, of course, is the 5 volt USB current. Because of the boost converter conversion, those two current values are different. OK, let's have a quick look at socketry. We've got a USB 1 amp here, a uh, big LED here, uh, micro USB charging input 5 volts, and a USB output 2 amps. Now on the side, we've got another socket labelled IN. And I was hoping that that would be 12 volts IN, so that you could charge this thing from uh, a vehicle. Let's see whether it is. Now that means I have to open this thing up, so the usual struggle with the rear cover. Okay, that's off. Um, now I've got to take the cells out. Now that's interesting, I've just noticed that on the uh, positive terminals of my cells, some of them have got these dents where they've been pushed up against these uh, little uh, domes on the positive connection. So the springs must be quite powerful. Now this is where you notice that the thing is held together with these little clips, let me get my screwdriver, these double clips here and here and they are all around the side but they're behind these metal strips so at first glance it looks like it's almost impossible to get this thing apart and there are no screws and I'm afraid the only technique I could come up with is to force it open with a screwdriver which is a bit naughty to the plastic but it does yield and come apart and then I keep forcing it all the way down the side and the sides open up as well. So a quick whistle stop tour of the electronics. We have a microcontroller here. This is uh, an HC595, which is a shift register for driving digits and segments on the display. Here are the two 8205 uh, MOSFETs for disconnecting the batteries, part of the battery protection circuit. There's some low value resistors here. So these are obviously for measuring current flow so the unit can determine whether current is being drawn and to tell you how many amps of course are coming out of the batteries. Now there are a lot of these um, 8 pin MOSFETs and you can tell they're MOSFETs. Um, this one probably is the easiest one to tell. 
because you've got four pins on one side of the chip all common together, three pins on the other side common together, and then an individual pin separate. Well, that's the gate. Now, I can't remember which is source and drain, but it's one way round. And there are two very tiny screws, which I'm going to have to take out. Oh, I'll do that off camera. And so here's the electronics, um, the two metal strips soldered onto the board. Um, and here's the other side of the board. Let's quickly go through what's on here. Um, so here's this mysterious second input socket, and it says 5 volts in, which is a real shame, because I was hoping that would be a 12 volt uh, in, so you could charge from a vehicle. But it seems not. So I'm thinking now that some of these units would be supplied with an AC power brick, and it would plug into there as an alternative to the 5 volts in up here on the micro USB. So a little bit disappointed. Um, there's the activate reset button for resetting the uh, battery protection IC, which is here, the DW01. Couple more 8205s, and there were two on the back, so there are four of those in total, uh, probably all in parallel. Another uh, low value resistor for measuring current, more of these eight pin MOSFETs. There's the main switch, here's the inductor, it's got the heat shrink around it to try and minimize noise. Although I noticed the other evening, this was howling away, squealing at a very loud, audible frequency, and it was actually getting quite annoying. Um, okay, so what else have we got? Now we've got this very interesting uh, display mounted at an incredibly jaunty angle there. Fantastic. Um, this is a custom display. It's got a single dot there, and it's got these three illuminated symbols. So this is not an off-the-shelf display. So two uh, USB Type A's, the big LED, and I'm just going to lift that capacitor to see what's underneath it. And uh, what is underneath it is a matrix of four resistors, which is the old Apple signaling to tell iPads that they can draw two amps. This is very interesting. I'm going to do a video on this uh, in its own right, but they're still putting on this little matrix of resistors, even though um, putting voltages on the uh, USB data pins is not meant to happen these days. And on the one amp USB socket, you can see that the two center pins are commons together, but they've got a pull up resistor and a pull down resistor. So there's some sort of uh, resistor voltage on that as well. Um, it's standard uh, shorted data pins for high current signaling, but um, those resistors must be for some other brand of uh, phone that needs them for charging. And I just love the way they're getting very creative with their uh, 3D modeling for the case. This wonderful slanted uh, display window, and then also these um, sculpted, where is it, on the case, you've got these sections which are sort of beveled off. There's one there, and uh, at the bottom they've kind of beveled off this corner. And this, this beveled section runs all the way up and then across. It's fantastic CAD work. So how would I sum up the electronics? Well, no gimmicks really. All the essential components are there. But there's nothing unnecessary like multi-voltage outputs. It's just good, solid design. And going by the numbers on this rear panel, this is uh, good high current electronics. We've got 1.8 amps, 5 volts on the input and 2.6 amps, 5 volts on the output. So I've uh, managed to reassemble it without too much drama. And if I press the button, of course, nothing happens because having just put the cells in, I have to press activate. That boots up the microcontroller and now it functions normally. So what do I think of the five cell mobile power bank? Well, it's ultra compact, I like that. It's extremely light, um, with the cells not in there, it's virtually weightless. With the cells in there, of course, it's uh, it's got quite a weight to it because they are heavy in themselves. Um, the electronics seem competent. The user interface is sensible for the first time. Um, the extra information on the display, the voltage of the cells, and the current that's uh, coming out from the cells or, or flowing in if you're in charging mode, is extremely handy and leads me to believe that this is as much a battery charger as it is a mobile power bank. And uh, which one will I take with me when I'm out and about? Well, it's got to be the five cell power bank, really. It's just a sensible size. 
you've got 13 amp hours of power in there when you're using 2600 milliamp hour cells. Um, it's uh, not as robust looking as the four cell. The four cell I actually dropped the other day from about a meter onto concrete and because of its hugely thick plastic it survived. Now if I wanted something completely crazy I'd take the six cell but it's just a balmy device really. So no I think this is the clear winner. It's a sensible mobile power bank.